<laughs> Hello, 45 Alpha Charlie Papa channel, and again, we're here with the Singing Gunsmith, mm -hmm. and we will be doing trail songs at the end for you who were you know, missing those in the last few videos. Oh, well, I thought we were getting serious, but yeah, I we don't want to do that. <laughs> don't want to do that. <laughs> you can tell it's about Christmas time. I've got my Christmas Story t-shirt on, t -shirt on. Yep. and I've got my leg lamp here, yep. just so uh, you know I'm really a Christmas Story fan. And I've got a t-shirt store out there. I'll put a link in below. But yeah, I'm exactly. My... Look what I just got in the mail today. I got my sweatshirt. From the 45 Alpha Charlie Papa channel. Ooh, huh? Yes. Nice. I'd be wearing it now, Very but nice. these lights are hot. These lights are hot. Yes, they are. <laughs> and I've got my FUD Free Zone uh, shirt on. And uh, I've got a couple other ones out there. So check it out. Uh, you won't really make nice. the shirts I suggest. Well, <laughs> I might. <laughs> Those are nasty suggestions. <laughs> they may not make the shirts that he suggests. <laughs> That's true. They may decide not to. Uh, what I wanted to talk about a little bit today, or we wanted to talk about it. Well, we can talk about it. I got uh, something unique for you. I've been kind of in a black powder kick uh, the last few videos. A um, little bit of modern stuff in there, but I've uh, been really shooting a lot of black powder lately since primers and bullets and stuff are hard to come by, and I'm just trying to conserve what I have to get over the hump. And I'm, I'm an old man, I'm 73 years old, so, uh, you know, uh, I enjoy shooting old guns, I enjoy working on old guns. Now that I'm retired, I go out and buy junk, <laughs> literally. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> and, oddball and, junk, not just oddball, junk. Yes, oddball <laughs> junk, and try and bring it back to where it has a, a useful life again. You know, he's not doing the, you know, the Mossberg 500s like I am. Yeah, you know, well, he's buying, I, I did he's the, buying oddball. I, I did <laughs> he the, helped me with yeah, it. Yeah, I did the uh, recoil pad and stuff, mm -hmm. so... I'm yeah. still working. I yeah. can still work on new stuff. I just like to play with 100-year-old guns, you know. Anyway, um, I was walking through a gun show and uh, uh, looking around, seeing what was a great bargain, and I came across an old British Bulldog. Ooh, British Bulldog. <laughs> it says British Bulldog on it, but of course it was made in uh, Belgium, and it was a cheap gun. What's interesting about these, and it says the British Bulldog right there on the top strap. What's interesting about these is that, you know, we've all gotten kind of spoiled by the old cowboy pictures uh, where we think that every uh, cowboy out there had a colt on his hip. Yep. And these and, are, uh, yeah, single, or they load like an old single yeah. action. And we are empty. Yeah, but it, though it loads it like a single action, it uh, is a double action revolver. Yeah. Anyway, uh, everyone thinks that you know every every cowboy had had his 1873 Colt. Mm -hmm. Wrong. <laughs> Think about it. Cowboys made a dollar a day. Thirty dollars a month. I got a dollar for you. Yeah. <laughs> When, you got to work faster. Man. When they get, when they needed, <laughs> when, when they needed a gun, uh, what do they need a handgun for? I'm sure you have snakes, maybe, maybe, maybe. How often? Yeah. Well, you know, I don't how, know. How, how often? How often on a cattle drive where you got five thousand cattle to stomp through the area before you get <laughs> before there? You, get you there, find a snake, snake, snake yeah. that needs shot. Well, yeah. well, you know, you got to kill the wounded ones. Well, that's true. <laughs> Uh, I, I kind of figured that uh, uh, making uh, $30 a month and a Colt costing $20, mm -hmm. that's three weeks' pay. Yeah. Now, how often do you actually use it? Well, you're going to have the guys, like just like concealed carry guys today, you're going to have guys that carry every day, always. Mm -hmm. Not going to be caught without a gun. You're going to have guys that will carry a gun now and again. Yeah. have one around in the in the glove compartment maybe not of the necessarily car. a handgun maybe yeah. a rifle or something well most of them if they had a gun would probably have a rifle in a in a uh, scabbard on mm -hmm. the horse but most of them you know you didn't want to carry that gun all they have it poking you in the ribs and let, just like a uh, modern guy might put his handgun in a uh, in the glove compartment of his car just mm -hmm. so he's got it close if he needs it the cop would put it in a saddlebag yeah and then you got the guys that never carry yeah. And if they had a handgun, it stayed in the chuck wagon. You know, if if Indians were going to attack, they they they're going to ride back mm -hmm. over there to the chuck wagon and hide behind it anyway. Yeah, the handgun was probably carried into town. Yeah, yeah you know, they sit there at the card table. Yeah, or, when you went into town, of course, you had to uh, had to show your manliness to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you you had to have a gun, otherwise, after all, <laughs> you were a milk toast. Anyway, uh, so 
these cost about two bucks. So if you're a cowboy making $20 a, uh, or a dollar a day, are you going to pay th three weeks worth of uh, pay to buy a Colt that's going to, and, and then a holster. So you know, it's mm -hmm. going to cost you a month's pay to get outfitted out. So you're going to put a month's pay into having a Colt that's going to sit in the saddlebag or sit in the uh, uh, yeah, be chuck wagon and, and, and then... You know, maybe be used. To, how many times of the year do you figure the average cowboy actually use the handgun? Yeah. If you had a gun, you probably had a Winchester in a saddle, a saddle scabbard, uh, rather than a handgun on your hip poking you in the ribs. But anyway, this is probably the actually actually the type of gun that won the West. To tell the truth, if you were sitting in a bar or in, at a card table, this was accurate at card table distances. Mm -hmm. Anything well, over three feet, I wouldn't yeah, guarantee you. Let's, let's take a quick look. Let's look at the cartridge at this thing. Yeah, too. let's look, look at the cartridge. 44 the Bulldog. The, fir the first cartridge on the left is a 44 Magnum case. The second one is a 44 Special case. And then, ta da, ta da, we have the mighty 44 Bulldog case. It takes all of about. 10 grains of black powder. Grain, yeah, Wikipedia said 15. 13. 13? 13, 13 fills grain. it to the top, and you'd have to really compress the load. Really yeah. compress the load. Um, yeah, and it's got a very interesting history because these guns were actually 44. Yeah. 44 Webley? Yeah. The gun was actually chambered in 44 Webley. Okay. That gun is chambered in 44 Webley. But 44 Webleys cost. Uh, what like did it say? Like cents something? Or no, I thought, it was, I thought it was seventy-six cents a box, something like that. Something like that. Uh, a fifty. Well, now remember, you're making a buck a day, so this is three quarters of a day's work to buy yeah. a box of ammo. Mm -hmm. The forty-four American or forty-four Bulldog, which was only made in the United States for the British Bulldog revolvers. Yeah. Like everything else in this uh, uh, thing, it's, it's kind of crazy. But anyway, these were like twenty-two shorts. They were where the other ones were expensive. These would come in at less than 50 cents a box, or right around 50 cents a box. So you're saving 20 cents. 20 cents doesn't sound like much until... No, but that's a 50-year daily pay. Exactly, until you're, you're thinking it's an hour and a half's work. It's <laughs> yeah. more, like more like two yeah. hours' work if you're working an eight-hour day. Or, yeah. yeah. If you're doing 12-hour well, days, that's... Yeah. Well, you got a dollar a day no matter how yeah, many hours. Yeah, no matter hours how many hours you work. Yeah, so, the hours yeah. didn't mean anything. So uh, this was... This was like a 22 short in a 22 long rifle, or, or like a 38 in a 357, yeah, 38 or special, and a 44 special, and a 44 magnum. Something more of a this target load, something a little less um, recoil. Yeah, 44 is an interesting uh, uh, cartridge because it's it's the same cartridge in a whole bunch of different lengths. This is the shortest. This is the 44 Bulldog. And the 44 Webley is just a tad yeah. longer. So if you thought 44 Webley was slow, and then slow. then you had 44 Russian, which mm -hmm. is a little bit longer. Then you had 44 Special, which was a little bit longer. Then you had 44 Magnum, which was a little bit longer. longer. They just kept making their case longer and longer. <laughs> and so it's it's kind of an interesting history on on, on the case. But uh, yeah, this is a, a good old 44 Bulldog. And we're gonna take this out and we're gonna shoot it a little bit. Uh, the load is black powder because the guns are pot metal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you look at this, this it was the time frame too. This black this, powder would yes, have been. this barrel is not screwed into this receiver; it's cast, and it's not necessarily even round. It's kind of sort of more or less yeah. round the way you might round draw. It. And the gun itself is uh, kind of if you've seen the uh, the uh, Russian the Gantz. Mm -hmm. that we're on the market. It's kind of similar to that. It's got this, this center pin that comes out and slides over to the side to remove. So that becomes your ejection rod. Instead of having that ejector to, on yeah, the side of the... To remove the uh, center pin and then the cylinder comes out. That's how you take them apart. Um, and so put it back together the same way. I always hate doing this on camera because uh, uh, with the hand in there and everything else, it's not as slick as it uh, if you set the gun up to do it. <laughs> you take the hand out of there and you don't have anything in there to, to mess it up. But uh, yeah, that's that's your ejector. To eject your, your empties and then it rotates back to the, go in the middle of the center pin. 
And uh, it's an interesting piece of Americana. Yeah, you, you remember the. Uh, you may, if you're old enough, you may or may not remember uh, the saying that it's hotter than a two dollar pistol. Yeah, there's your two dollar pistol. Two dollar pistol. There actually was a two dollar pistol, <laughs> and I I would argue more cowboys had this in their saddlebag than had Colts, mm -hmm. just because of the hip and. Uh, of course, or, at, you know, at the, the ranchers, at the, if they happen to be you know, running around, or you know. at the card table, mm -hmm. it was forty-four, and uh, it, well, the one the loads I've got are ten grains of three F, and uh, it's a round ball on there, which was what one hundred and twenty-two grains. One hundred twenty-two grains. Yeah. One hundred twenty-two grain round ball. I'm using for to go through it. So uh, it was uh, you know about like yeah. a, a bigger diameter thirty-eight <laughs> uh, special or thirty-eight Colt, mm -hmm. somewhere in that class. Uh, not something that we would consider uh, um, a man stopper today, mm -hmm. but you know, you know the old saying: <laughs> first rule of gunfight, have a gun. Have a gun. <laughs> and uh, I'm not volunteering to take a 44 to the belly. So. <laughs> no, no. Even I don't at, care how fast it's going. Even at low velocity, we don't want to take a 44 to the belly. So, no. uh, uh, so anyway, I want to wish you all a merry Let's Christmas. Go out to the range, take this out to the range, and shoot it. Okay. And we'll just kind of discuss what we think about it uh, at the range afterwards. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll go load up a few more rounds and we'll take a few rounds out there. I don't have a lot of 44 cases. I've cut that short. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we can put, you know, two, maybe three cylinders through it. A mm -hmm. couple. And, uh, yeah, it's a five shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's kind of it's, like a modern 38. It's, uh, it's got this big fat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's that, not much handle to hold on to, so nope. it can't have a lot of recoil, or you'd lose it. And you can lose it in you know, the palm of your hand. No, yeah, yeah. It fills, just fills the hand. Fill your hand, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the John Wayne pictures many, many times, you know. <laughs> he was my hero when I was growing up. Shall, shall we do their trail song for them before we head well, off to the trail? Well, I was kind of thinking about what trail song should we do. I mean, we keep doing Happy Trails, yeah. which is a which is a nice sign-off, you know. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking we should try something else. Well, yeah, that's fine. By the way you watch the sunset, I can tell. Soon you'll saddle up that old strawberry rum. <laughs> and hit. <laughs> I, I don't know this one. You don't know this I one. Know How about... One. Uh, a four-legged friend, a four-legged friend, he'll never let you down. <laughs> He's honest and faithful right up to the end. That wonderful one, two, three, four-legged friend. You'd have to watch uh, um, the Bob Hope movie, Bob Hope Son movies. of Pale Face, I think, where Roger okay, sees that yeah, one. Okay, yeah, Pale, Son of Pale Face. I've watched those, both those movies. Pale, Pale Face, Face and Son of Pale, Pale Face. Face yeah. It's uh, been a long you know, time. Just, just like my guns, I like obscure <laughs> songs. Uh, I, I'm the one who's chewing up the jail, you know, wrecking the jails, chewing the bars, and, and spitting, spitting out, out nails. nails. There you go. <laughs> anyway, let's get out to the range. All right, let's get out to the range and see what we can do. All right, here we are out at the range. Beautiful, Beautiful range. Green Valley. Yeah. Imagine, imagine this being a, a, a smoky bar. A smoky bar room. And I just caught the... The uh, card sharp across the table from me with two aces up his sleeve and four in his hand. Yeah. And, and they were both spades. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I got my, my little um, British Bulldog and I think I'll try single action. I haven't shot this in so long. Let's see if it shoots. You dirty son of a... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, that's all five of them, wasn't it? Yeah. And this is that one didn't go off the first time around. And then as we said, you your rod here comes out, moves to the to the side. And that becomes your ejector to force your empty. Well, at that distance, those were your first three shots. Yeah, and then and, and then, then I decided that uh, I ought to hold a little lower. <laughs> but nonetheless, across a card table uh, with uh, ten grains of uh, black powder, 
on a 44 caliber or 433 caliber or 433 ball uh, it'll do the job you yep. dirty rat five aces and two of them are spades But it's like it's to the, basically the same point yeah. that it was shooting for uh, two to hit for me. Yep. Really low. T tends to shoot a little bit to the right, but that's not a bad group for what it is. Well, yeah, it's, you know, it, it'll do the job. It will do what it's supposed to do. Oh, as that's all good cowboys. We got, uh, you know, empty chambers, so we only got four loaded. There you go. One for, one empty one for safety. <laughs> one empty one for safety. I told you, Jason, I was going to gut you if you cheated again. Well, that last one hurt him. <laughs> That's all we got today, but you know, look at how dirty she is. Filthy black powder. She needs a good cleaning. Uh, it, it's interesting for uh, a uh, pot metal cheap gun. It does what you need it to do. I mean, if if what you need is a, is something for self-defense in a tight situation, it'll work. Yeah. It's that pretty. It's uh, uh, would the double action is atrocious. Up if you really wanted it to uh, be easy to use double action, because single action or double action, it's it's got a really heavy pull. So it would it could use some work, but. Uh, Nonetheless, it goes bang and it makes holes in the right where you're pointing it. Uh, I hate it when that happens. Yeah, you know, the one happens. thing about uh, shooting sports is you get exactly what you deserve. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> well, you know, this is 45 Alpha Charlie Papa Channel. It's the British Bulldog. And the yeah. old singing gunsmith with the British Bulldog. Yeah. <laughs> God bless our gracious. Gracious, I don't oh, know. it'll be Queen because it would have been Victorian era. Queen Vic until oh, Queen uh, 1901, okay. so okay. when she died. So it'll be Gracious Queen uh, if uh, we were doing British things. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, happy trails to mm -hmm. you. I think we already did that. We did happy trails, yeah. But I can do the background. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. You're not bumping out any. <laughs> I, I didn't bump it out of him from that guy. <laughs>